everybody, this is Heather Sides. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Spokane, Washington. I come to you live every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Pacific time to bring you three new ideas every week and I show you how I made them. Those of you who've been following me for a while know that I took a little bit of a hiatus. I just had some things I needed to take care of and get myself back on track. So I've done that and I'm excited to be back and doing these lives with you again. I've missed getting to hear from you guys and see you and talk to you. And I do want to say thank you to those of you who reached out to me and many of you did um, while I was absent, checking in on me, seeing how I was doing, telling me you missed me and all those things felt really, really good. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So let's take a minute here as I adjust my camera. I just want to get everything going on my main monitor here so that I can um, see what you guys are seeing so I can also see your um, comments so we can talk and speaking of the comments I am still going to uh, be awarding prizes for participating in the conversation so what that means is when you um, comment whether you just say hello tell me where you're from or if you get really actively involved in the conversation and answer other people's questions, ask questions, uh, anything, um, I will put your name in a drawing and I will award that drawing the following week. Um, I also offer this to those of you who are watching this on YouTube. As you know, when we're done with the Facebook Live, I um, upload it to YouTube so that people can watch it later if they choose. So um, if you comment on YouTube or here on Facebook, your name will go into the drawing next week. So make sure you participate in the conversation. So let's see, it looks like I have, um, oh good, I have everything back. And Nell and Marsha, Judy, Nancy. Oh, you guys, I'm so glad to see you guys here. You know, I wasn't sure, uh, since I didn't get my notice up until today, how many people would um, see it in time. And I got lots of good responses, so thank you. Marsha asked how my son is. He's doing great. He got a job in October. And I think last time I was live, he had maybe just gotten the job. I can't quite remember. Um, but anyway, he uh, is working and doing well. In fact, we have this fun little thing that we do where... Um, I work at home two days a week and I work in the office three days a week. And so on the days that I'm home, um, on my payday, I buy us lunch and on his payday, he buys us lunch. So that's kind of a fun little thing that we do. And, um, you know, I don't get to see a whole lot of him because he works nights. Well, he works 3 a.m. to 11 a.m. So uh, he's sleeping a lot when I'm around the house and awake. So we're like two ships passing in the night. Um, and the animals are all doing wonderful. Lucy's her normal crazy self and Goblin is getting bigger and bigger and Lucy wants her to be her best friend and Goblin wants nothing to do with that plan. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. So I'm gonna go ahead, you guys, and get this camera turned around. We're gonna get started on our cards. I had my brand new annual catalog that goes live on May 1st. So I'm excited for you guys to see that and see all the fun new things that are in it. I have to say, honestly, this new catalog is probably my favorite one they've had in years. Um, they, they kind of restructured how they present everything. And so, you know, if you've been with Stampin' Up! a long time, you know that years ago, their catalog was more of an idea book and people bought the catalog uh, just for the ideas. And they kind of got away from that and it, it was more of a regular catalog, though it did have some great ideas in it. This new catalog is formatted in a way that it has ideas, tips, suggestions, um, less, not lessons really, but things that a brand new stamper would need to know to get stamping, but also some great ideas for more advanced stampers that maybe want to do a little bit more. I love the layout of this catalog. Um, so, hey Kathy, welcome. So those of you who are demonstrators, I know a lot of you are, um, let me know what you think of the new catalog. I, you know, I, I have heard a lot of feedback. People don't like that, don't like it, because uh, it is very different. Um, I like it. I think it's going to, um, I think our customers are going to really like it because it, in my opinion, benefits them more than just a sales catalog. Uh, so, so I like it. I like it a lot. Um, and also one last thing before I turn the camera around, I almost forgot. I put out an, um, kind of an APB 
in March saying, hey, I need some sales in order to remain active as a demonstrator. If you've got an order to place, please, um, I, I would love your business because I, I need the sales to remain active. And you guys stepped up to the plate and I really, really, really appreciate it. So thank you very much. Um, you know, it made me feel good to just to know that you guys cared like that to respond in such a way. Um, I really don't have enough words. All I can say is thank you. It, it meant the world to me, so thank you. Um, okay, let's get this camera turned around. Hang on here. Okay, so turning things around. And somehow I think, I think I pushed the button that now you're staring at my ceiling. There we go, now we got it turned around. I kind of wondered how it was gonna be getting back used to um, getting me everything lined up right, because you know how I am about getting things lined up right. Okay, so, and of course, see, it's crooked. Okay, I forget that my screen is like a couple of seconds. You know, when you see it on Facebook, it's just a couple of seconds lag time behind when I actually do it. So I look at my screen, and I think, oh my gosh, everything's crooked, but then it straightens out. <clears throat> okay, so this first card I'm making is using this stamp set and die set, uh, this bundle called Fluffiest Friends. You guys know me, you know my style. I love these kind of stamp sets. I think they're adorable. And this was in the January through April mini catalog. It uh, has also been carried over uh, to the new um, catalog, or to the new annual catalog. So, um, hey, Marsha. I'm seeing lots of comments, people who have mixed feelings about the um, new catalog. And, you know, that's fair, too. You know, I think every catalog we're going to have mixed feelings about because there's always going to be some things we like and some things we don't. And, um, you know, and Kathy's saying she's not quite sure yet uh, that it is a lot to get used to. And that is very, very true. It is very different. It's, um, it's not just a couple little things different. The whole entire layout is different so um it does take some getting used to so um uh what's the yes nell just said this is your kind of stamp set yes it is i just I, I mean look how fat they are these chubby little guys you know i can relate to them and i i just love them so anyway so i'm going to show you the card we're going to make using the designer series paper uh from the regals um is it regals yeah from the regals color family and look at him look at this cute little bear and I tried to do a little shading and instead it looks like he peed himself so um you know we'll be you got to be kind of careful with shading I want to show you up close something that I don't know how well it shows up on the camera um but one thing we're going to do is this part right here which is his little cave um I crinkled up the paper, and you're going to see how I did it, uh, but it just gives a little bit of dimension. Oh, I, you can see it better when it's up close, but it gives a little bit of texture and dimension to it, kind of that rocky sort of feel, so that was kind of fun. And then the inside with the little bumblebees, um, I almost said swimming around, flying around. Nell's not sure about the new camp or the new catalog yet either. You know, I, I think, you know, um, it is going to take... It takes some getting used to. All change does, right? Okay, so the base of the card is your standard card base. It's eight and a half by five and a half. Scored in the middle, right there at four and a quarter. We're gonna fold it in half, and then we're gonna use our uh, the bone folder to get a nice crisp edge, just like so. And let's go ahead and start with our envelope. I like to take a little strip of my designer series paper. This is probably the easiest way to decorate my envelope, though I suppose uh, stamping it is pretty easy too. But I took a strip of the designer series paper, and this color, by the way, is crushed curry. And it is two and a half by six inches. And I have to, I have to put my glasses on to put the glue on so that I can see, um, see where my uh, glue is going. That was weird. My comments all just suddenly, suddenly disappeared. There they are. I'm back. Hey, Diane, welcome. Okay, so we're going to put a little glue on here. I try to get it as close to the edge as I can, but do your glue pretty lightly because when you put that piece of paper over it to glue it down, it's going to squish out over the edges. I do have a remedy for that, and it is um, 
an adhesive eraser. It's not something that we sell at Stampin' Up, but you can get them on Amazon uh, fairly inexpensively. I think I paid a couple of dollars for mine and they last for ages. There's a good chance I'll have to use it sometime tonight, so you'll see it. So anyway, a little bit of glue in the middle there. And then I just line these up. Press it down. And I like to press it from the inside too, just to make sure I get it really good. And then, oh, Marsha, did Marsha Long have to help you find me? Because I was lost. Um, okay, so let's see. I'm sure I have all sorts of things to tell you guys about because I've been gone so long. So, you know, I'll blurt them out as I think about them. What about you guys? Have any of you had anything really fun or exciting happen in the last several months while I've been gone? Things that I would know about if I'd been around? Um, I, I'm excited to catch up with you guys. Okay, so I just trimmed around the edge there. And, you know, if you accidentally cut a little bit of your envelope, that's not a big deal. It really isn't. Nobody else is going to know but you. So the envelope's done. I'm going to set it aside and put my little scraps in the garbage here. Okay, so now I have these little strips that I'm going to put on the inside of my card. And, you know, um, one of the things that I typically do is I take my piece of white and I'll put a strip like this on the white um, and then put it in, right? But this time I did it a little bit different. Let me show you what I did. So I made, normally my piece on the inside is four by five and a quarter, but I made it a little bit smaller this time. It's still five and a quarter, but it's three and three quarters, I think. Uh, yeah, three and three quarters, okay? So now I have my little strips and they are half an inch and five eighths of an inch. And they're a little longer than what I need, not a big deal, because I can trim them down. And I'm gonna add a little bit of glue here. This glue is amazing, it, it sticks really well, so you really don't need a whole lot of it. And uh, what I'm doing is I am not centering the designer series strip. I am putting it right to the very edge of the gray, and this is our slate gray. Um, so just a tiny little bit sticks out on the edge making that little um, border. And I know it's kind of hard to see up against the white, uh, you know, this kind of white background, but you'll see it really well up against the crushed curry. See, just like that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down onto the card. So again, a little bit of glue. We have several different types of adhesives and you'll see me using them all, all the time. Um, it just kind of depends on what I'm trying to accomplish or what is handy. Sometimes it's, um, sometimes what I use is based on what I'm trying to accomplish and sometimes it's just, it was what was in reach. Nell went to on stage for the first time. That is so exciting now. Um, years and years and years ago when I was a demonstrator, I used to go to the conferences, the annual conferences, and I loved them. I know they are so much fun and I wasn't able to go this time and I was really bummed, but maybe next time. So now I'm gonna trim off the edge, just the excess right there. I kind of got it a little wonky, but that's okay. All right. So now I'm gonna take this piece that again, remember I cut it a little bit narrower because we're just gonna butt it right up against the, the strip that we just put in. So the strip is going from end to end, but the white does not. And I just, I kind of liked the look of that. So now I'm gonna take my snail adhesive. Um, I really like the snail. It does take a little, get, a little bit of getting used to because sometimes the, the little strip of glue kind of scoots off the side and um, you just got to get used to it. It doesn't take too long, but it, but it does take some getting used to. So if you're trying it for the first time, don't get too frustrated. Hang in there and feel free to contact me if you have questions about it. If you're about ready to tear all your hair out, don't do that. Call me. So now there's the inside Oh, and you know what I forgot to do before we did that? I forgot to stamp the bees. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's my bees. And I've got my black memento ink. And then you know what I'm going to do? Because I need to block the edges because I don't want to stamp on my paper, right? Uh, on my card. So I'm taking some of my um, post-it tape. And I'm just gonna put it right here like this. 
So that way, when I stamp off the edge, it's gonna go on my post-it tape and not onto my card itself. Post-it tape is another thing you can get it on Amazon. And um, it's, well, it is kind of pricey, but it does last a long time. And I also use it when I'm trying to, um, uh, what's the word, hold down my dies to keep them in place before I cut them. So it is very useful. Okay, so let's stamp our little bees now. Come on. Okay. Make sure I've got them going the right direction here. Okay, this way. So I'm just going to kind of go like this. And I'm going to do it down here. Oops, I got a little bit of a mark on there, but... Oh. Okay, now I'm going to clean off the stamp. By the way, a little lesson that I learned. Um, if you go several months without using your little cleaning pad like this, um, if you've never used it before, it's kind of spongy. It reminds me of neoprene, and, and maybe that's what it is. It's thick for a neoprene, but... Um, Mine obviously sat for a few months unused and it really dried out and it was hard. It was um, not pliable at all. It took me quite a while to get it soaked all the way through uh, to be able to use it again. So, hey, John, welcome. Um, so if, if that happens to you, don't get frustrated when you try to get it wet again and think, oh, I've ruined it and throw it out. Just be patient with it. Know that it takes quite a while to get enough water in it. Maybe even soak it for a while. I, I didn't do that last night. I stood there with it. Um, but it does take a while. It can, it will be, um, it'll go back to the way it should be. It just doesn't happen quickly. So hang in there. You know, the other thing that I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of these great little bees on my envelope. Let's see, how do I want to do this? I'm trying again to make sure they're going the right direction. Yeah, I think we'll just leave it. Well, one more, right? What does one more hurt? There we go. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Dark Daffodil Delight marker, put the lid back on my ink pad. You always want to do that right away. I'm going to take that and I'm going to color in the bees. There's a lot of them, but it only takes a moment because it's pretty much just one little dot of ink that colors in each half of the body. I think these little bees are adorable. And you know how it is. If it's adorable, it calls to me. I have to have it. Okay, and then we're going to do that on the inside of our card as well. So a little bit of um, update on me. I recently rejoined <laughs> uh, the craziness of dating. Um, I decided to try online dating, right? And uh, it's insane. It really is insane. Um, you know, it's a whole lot different because... You know, when you're younger, you're very social and you do lots of social things and there's lots of ways that you meet people. But then as you get older, you work and you go home and, you know, there's nobody here in my home I'd like to date. And um, most of the people at my office work from home. And so it's not like I ever see anybody in the office I'd like to date. So I tried the online dating and I've met some nice gentlemen and, you know, um, no real report yet as far as how that's going. It's still fairly new. I tried it a little bit last summer, but quickly found that I just wasn't quite ready yet at that time. I think I'm ready now. Um, okay, so it looks like my ink smeared just a little bit right here, and so I'm going to use my sand eraser, and it, it's kind of hard because I can't really see where I'm erasing, and I don't want to actually erase my stamped image but I did want to get some of that extra ink off. Sand Eraser, uh, again, another product Stampin' Up! does not carry. It's made by Tom, this one's made by Tombow. Um, and I bought mine from Amazon, they're a couple bucks. Okay, so I'll take that tape off. Okay, so 
Now let's get going on our card. For the card front, I have a strip of our crushed curry. <laughs> I had to think about that for a minute. Um, a designer series paper, and it is two inches by five and a half inches. Make sure I cut it down. Yes, I did. Okay. And then I have two and an eighth inches by five and a half. So I have just a tiny little bit of a mat that just helps this. So the crushed curry pops on the front of the card a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. Put it on here, get it as straight as possible. Remember, uh, we do not aim for perfection. Who remembers? We don't aim for perfection, we aim for... Does anyone remember? There we go, Kathy said that she soaks her chamois when it dry, when hers dried out, she just soaked it. So um, that that probably is a better route to go than standing over it like I did. Okay, so now I'm gonna put it on my card. Do, do, do. Where did I put my, oh, there's my adhesive. So we're gonna glue this down. And I'm not gonna center it. I'm putting it just a little bit off center. So um, I'd say it's not quite half an inch over. Just wanna make sure it's straight-ish. Okay, that looks good to me. Now what we're gonna do is we have this little piece that's the cave, right? And I wanted to make it have kind of a little bit of a rocky appearance by crumpling it up. But when you just crumple up your cardstock, let me show you, just crumpled up. It's hard to get it to really crumple well. Now watch me prove myself a liar. Um, I mean, that still works okay, I guess you could yeah, that still would work. I find though, what I like to do is I take my little spritzer, you get a set of like three of these for like four bucks or five bucks or something like that. And um, before I crinkle it, I go ahead and I just squirt it and I squirt both sides. And then I crinkle it. Wet paper crinkles a lot easier. You can see I'm getting a much smaller ball. So I'm gonna get a lot more texture this way. See how much more texture there is to it and a lot more um, crinkles, but adhesive doesn't stick well to wet paper. So then what you wanna do is take your heat tool. If you don't have the heat tool, um, I'm sure a hair dryer would work just fine. It's gonna get loud for a minute here, but it dries it out pretty quickly and it still may even be a tiny bit damp when I'm done, but for the most part, I do try to dry it out um, because I wanna make sure that it sticks. And I do both sides and you can see where the, you know, it gets lighter gray in this case because it's not wet anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and do both sides though. Just wanna make sure we've got it nice and dry-ish. There we go. But see how that looks all nice and like a cave, right? So let's go ahead and glue our cave uh, to the card. Now, when it's not flat, when your paper's, um, you know, kind of dimensional like this, it the adhesive doesn't stick as easily to it as it does a completely flat surface. So I do uh, like to use a little bit um, stronger adhesive for these kind of things. And the Terran tape is excellent for that. So I'm putting a little bit here. There we go, just like so. And then when once you lay down your tear and tape, take your bone tool, your bone folder, and go like this. What that's doing is it's really pressing that adhesive into the paper. Um, by doing that, it makes it a whole lot easier to pull the release tape off. Then I take my take your pick tool, my favorite tool of all of our tools, and it just pulls that release tape right off. Get in there. There we go, got one more. We're gonna do this technique on another card tonight because uh, I actually made that card first because I liked this technique. And then when I was making this card, I was like, oh, I need to do that with the cave. 
So there's the cave. There we go. So now it needs a bear, right? So I've got my little piece of white, basic white. And let's get, get my black ink back out again. I'm gonna get my bear stamp, my little chubby guy. Okay, so we've got him inked up. I'm just gonna stamp him on here. There we go. I got a little bit on the paper, doesn't matter, because we're gonna use a die cut to cut him out anyway. But you know how you get those marks like that? It's from rocking the stamp, um, when, both when you ink and when you stamp, because when you're rocking it, it's tipping that into the ink and then it tips it onto your paper. So the way to avoid that is to remember straight down, straight up. Okay, now we gotta get some colors out. I have quite a few of them here. So let's see, the Smoky Slate. Did I use Smoky Slate on this one? No, I don't know that I did. But I did use Crumb Cake, Light and Dark Crumb Cake. I also used the Light and Dark Pecan as well as our number uh, 200 in the Neutrals colors. And then I used the dark and light azure blue for his um, honey pot. I used the light black for his little foot pads. And then for his, uh, for the honey that's dripping out of the honey pot, I used our wild wheat light and dark and a little bit of our dark daffodil delight. So there's a lot of colors here that I used to make him. And let's start with the lighter ones and work our way out. So we're gonna start with the light and dark crumb cake to do his little snout there. And I'm just using the bullet tip. And I'm gonna kinda just do a little bit of kind of well, it doesn't look so much like an angle, but I'm not coloring the whole thing um, with the dark one. Now I'm going to take the light and I'm going to go in and finish coloring it. I want to blend that edge where the two meet. There we go. And it looks a little different as it soaks into the paper a little bit more. You may want to come back and add just a tiny bit more color, which is what I'm doing right here, just to give it a little bit more of a shadow. There we go. Uh, or not shadow, but shading. And then I'm going to take the dark crumb cake just to do the inside of his ears. This little scribbles here. Let's do his honey pot because those are some nice light colors. So I've got the dark and the light crushed curry. I'm going to take the dark and just go right around the edge. And I'm not going all the way over with it. And I'm going to take the light crushed curry, and I'm going to kind of do the same thing. Um, I'm not going to go all the way, but I am going to try to blend a little bit with that dark. And then I'm going to take the dark daffodil delight, and I'm going to fill in the rest of that honey. And at first, you see, it really is a big difference. So what I want to do is really blend it into the crushed curry. It One, it lightens up that crushed curry quite a bit. But now we have a little bit of sh a look of shading on our honey. I'm going to use the light and dark azure. Is it azure blue? Uh, azure afternoon. So I'm going to take the dark. I'm going to go at the top of the honey pot here. And then I'm going to go around the edge, just a little bit up there, but I'm going to go at an angle again and just kind of color it in. Then I take my light one. I'm going to color in the, all the white space now on the honey pot. And 
and really blend. Just little circles like this will go ahead and blend your coloring. Let's see how that blends right in. And I think I'm gonna take my dark just to give it a little shade over these lines. I'm gonna let it soak in a little bit, but I am still gonna try to blend it out a little. There we go. Now let's do his little paws, his little the little pads on his feet with the light black. One thing I really like about the light black is it looks very uh, opaque when you first put it on there. Um, but with a lot of things, if you're coloring over lines, as it soaks into the paper, those lines start to show through. Not so much on this, like on the paw, because it's such a small one. But if I had done it like more on his body, uh, where it's bigger lines, they do tend to show through a little bit better. So the black isn't just totally covering up all the detail. Okay, so now I have my three shades of brown. And when I'm doing something big like this, I really do like to use three shades. So I take the darkest of the three, which in this case is my number 200. Oops, I don't want my brush tip. I want the bullet tip. You know, really, um, as far as which tip to use, uh, it kind of is just personal preference for a lot of things. Um, I like the bullet tip a lot, but if I'm filling in a big space, I'll use the brush tip because it goes a little quicker. So I'm starting out by just doing the edges here. Hold on, Lucy. And I'm going over where all the lines are. Now I'm going to take my dark um, pecan pie, which is this one, my bullet tip, and now is when I'm going to color in a little bit more of him. So I'm going to just kind of go over this, sort of blend in along that edge where the number 200 was used, where it was a little darker. And I'm doing the same thing I did before where I'm kind of trying to color uh, half of him at an angle. So. And you know what? It might be easier to use my brush tip because there's so much of him to color. Get his little leg. And I know it's really hard to see that um, the darker because they blend in so well together, but that's one of the things about shading. You don't want it to be such a stark difference. Um, just slightly darker. Uh, but I do sometimes go back afterward and add a little bit more of the darker color uh, just because I don't think there's enough. Okay, and I do want to color a little bit of his face. There we go. Now I'm going to take my light pecan pie and again, make sure you're blending in those edges. Hey, Teresa, welcome. I'm so excited to see so many of you coming back tonight. Okay, so he's all colored in. I do want to add just a little bit more of the dark, I think. Um, just, you know, where these lines are for a little bit of shading. And it doesn't look like I blended his 
face all that well, so I'm going to blend this line right here a little bit better. There. Now I'm going to go ahead and get my dies out. And this set comes with quite a few extras. You get like a little branch, you get a hive, you get some grass, some leaves, um, and then of course all the stamps too. So, um, well not all the stamps, like there's not a stamp for the bees or the flowers, but all of the, all the chubby animals you've gotta die for. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and stick this down. Pulling out my, my post-it tape. And get it lined up. It's kind of tricky sometimes to line them up just right because you don't want it to be so close that it cuts off the edge of your stamp, but um, if it's too far on one side, it'll be too close on the other. So, so you kind of just got to play with it. Okay, now let me get my um, embossing machine. Wow, you can tell these things have set for a while because they're kind of dusty. I'm really, I'm kind of embarrassed. Okay, so let's see. Getting all the dust off, or at least some of it anyway. Okay, it folds up so nice, and then you just unfold it, and you've got the plates here. We're going to put our little bee, bee, how about our bear? on there and just feed it through. The smaller machine, we sell two of them, and the smaller one does fit most of our dies, though we do have some dies and some embossing folders that are a little bit are bigger and won't fit through this. We have a bigger machine that fits those. But if you're wanting to save a little money, um, like I said, this one does fit most of our dies. Okay, so now, set these aside for the moment. And then our the post-it tape comes right off. We have our cute little bear. Look at him. He's so happy with his honey pot. Put my dies away. I like to put mine away right away because I will lose them if I don't. Some people um, are better than I am when it comes to, you know, putting them all away at the end. I have to put them away as I go. Anybody else like that? Okay, so we're gonna put, so I did never see an answer to my question. We don't strive for perfection. We strive for ish, straight-ish. Um, you know, whatever it is, we go for ish, not perfect. Hello, Joan. Joan is also from Washington. That's where I'm at. I'm in Spokane. Where are you at, Joan? I'm going to put one right in the middle. You guys know that, see, look at that. See, I go crazy with the dimensionals. I can't handle it. I have to have, to have a lot of them. Thanks, Marsha. My little garbage can to take off all of these, the backs of the 8,000 dimensionals I feel I have to use. Let's see, did I get them all? Nope. Okay. And now we're just gonna stick him right here in his little cape. Uh, nope, I lied. We're going to take the, I have the light smoky slate and we're just gonna color like that. And what that does is it allows us to give a little bit of a shadow underneath him so it doesn't look like he's floating in midair. And you saw I just scribbled that. It wasn't anything precise or fancy. So that is card number one with the little bear and the bumblebees. Ta-da! So card number one. Let's go for card number two. Are you guys ready? Hi, Shannon. Welcome. Okay, so this next card uses our designer series paper that is in the spring um, April, April, January through April mini catalog. I love this designer pa paper. It did not, most of the time designer paper does not carry through to the next catalog because they want to keep offering new papers and they can't offer, you know, a million different ones, right? So if you like this paper and I love it, um, you'll want to get it before the end of April. 
Okay. So, it's this card. This card is actually both a little note card, or a little card, but also, I'll show you a little trick here. It's a pocket. I love pocket cards, and it's a gift card holder. So, we're going to make it, you can just slide your little gift card right in there, in the back. And then it slides back in. It's a little tight fit, but that's okay. If you don't like a tight fit, you can make the dimensions on this piece a little bit smaller, uh, so it slides in and out a little bit easier. But this is a quick and easy card. And the other thing I like about it is I don't think it's really feminine or masculine. So, um, like I have a friend who has a birthday coming up at the end of the month, and I think I'm gonna give him this card uh, because, like I said, it's neither feminine nor masculine. Okay, so here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna use the go-to greeting stamp set. This is a great sentiment set. I've used it before. Um, and the reason I like it is it's got the different um, sentiments that are very, very common, but it has them in different sizes and fonts. So you get a lot of use out of it. And I am all for stamp sets that um, you can use in many different ways. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, let's, let's do our envelope. Oops, hang on here. I have to clean up as I go. Okay, so do our envelope first so I have my strip here that is two and a half inches wide this looks bigger than two and a half nope it's only two and a half two and a half inches wide by six inches this is the um it's got both the front side and the back side of this paper and I'm gonna tr you can kind of see how it's sort of metallic looking but it's not overly metallic it's just really cool I like it and then this side isn't necessarily metallic but it is glossy okay so we're gonna put some glue on the envelope I think I did this technique for all of the envelopes this time. Do, 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 do. Oops, got my finger right through the glue because, you know, that's what I do. Okay. Okay, and then line it up. Now, one thing that you do want to be careful of, not careful is too, maybe too strong of a word, but when you are making this particular card, we're going to be utilizing both sides of this paper. So you want to make sure that it's a paper that both sides go together well. Most of the time, that's the way our designer series papers are made. So they do go together, but sometimes they don't, or sometimes you just don't like both sides or whatever. So you want to get one that you like both sides and that you feel that they both go together well. So now I'm trimming off the extra here. Hold on, Lucy Goosey. Okay, hang on, gotta let the doggy out. Okay, so now our envelope is done. It's kind of crooked, but that's good. All right, so the first step, what we're gonna do is we're going to make the card base, the pocket. So what this is, is a strip of the designer series paper. It is, um, did I do the whole, it's 10 inches. Okay, so it is three and seven eighths inches wide by 10 inches long. And then I scored it here at one and a quarter inches. And then I scored it at five, five and a quarter, yes. So it scored at five and a quarter, it scored at one and a quarter. And be very, very careful. Uh, a lot of times our designer series paper, designer series paper is thinner than your normal cardstock. So if you press too hard with your scoring blade, you cut right through the paper. Um, I did that on mine a little bit um, on my first one. So just be very, very cautious of that. And then, we're, so we're gonna fold it in half at that, at that um, five and a quarter inch score mark. We're gonna use the bone folder, just get a nice crisp edge. And then this one, where it's scored at one and a quarter, we're just gonna fold it down, just like so. Oh, good, I'm glad you like the envelope, Shannon. Um, it looks like it wasn't perfectly straight, so I'm just adjusting it a tiny little bit. Hold it in place, and there we go. All right, so now I'm gonna open it back up. I'm going to take my tear and tape, and I'm gonna go right on the edge here. Now you wanna be careful, get it right on that edge because the closer 
in it is, the less room you have for the note that slides in and out. It gets a little bit tighter. So uh, you don't want to have to make that piece so narrow um, just because you're glued too far in. Well, ask me how I know. <laughs> so let's see here. Oh, oh, you're very welcome, Shannon. I try to just babble as I go because some of these things are things I've been doing for years and some of them are things that I've just learned along the way. Um, and I figure, uh, you know, there's always going to be someone out there who hasn't learned it yet and will appreciate learning it like I did. So now I'm going to go ahead and close this up, make sure I've got it going straight. And one thing I liked about this paper with the plaid, it lines right up so it looks, it almost looks seamless. So now we've created our little pocket, right? So the next step is I have a piece of, let's see, that's our insert. I have a piece of gray granite, no, basic gray, basic gray. This piece is uh, five and a quarter by four, and we're just gonna glue this down. And it is, hold on, I'm doing this backwards. There we go, that's better. This is the Lost Lagoon. This is five and a quarter by four, and it's just gonna give us a tiny little bit of an edge around uh, the pocket. Even though it's the same color, to me, when we put it on our card base, it just gives a nice finished look. I personally like that. So we're gonna go ahead and glue this down. If we can find the adhesive, there we go. I get going and I start throwing products everywhere and then I can't find what I need. Okay, and I'm sure none of you do the same thing. I am gonna put a little bit of extra adhesive here uh, just because I, I wanna make sure it's glued down well. One thing I forgot to mention, when you do the inside of your pocket, I do recommend tear and tape because remember that um, insert is gonna slide in and out possibly several times. And so you do want a stronger adhesive that's gonna handle um, that frequent use. Kathy loves the stamp set that we're using with this because of its versatility. I, I completely agree, Kathy. Okay, so now I'm lining this up on here, going for straight-ish. And I forgot to glue that little piece down, so let's go ahead and do that. And I can just use my regular, you can use tear and tape. I think I used tear and tape on my first one, uh, just because that's what I happened to be using at the time because I was, you know, putting that piece together. But... Um, for just that little flap if you want to just use like this or even your liquid adhesive that works just fine and then I'm going to take my ribbon this is my Lost Lagoon ribbon and I forgot to check uh, to see if it's going to be in the if it's in the new catalog or not um, or if you need to order it from you know by the end of April uh, in the mini catalog so if you like this ribbon um, that's definitely something you want to check out Okay, so now I'm just going to tie a little bow here. Stay. Sometimes you got to talk to it. Remember, you got to show it who's boss. It seeks out your weaknesses. Bows do. Okay, there we go. And my tails are not the same length, and they usually are not when I get done. So then I'm going to go ahead and trim them. A good rule of thumb is that your tail should go to about the edge of your little loop. There we go. So now that part is almost done. One last piece is we're gonna put it on the card base. And because it's a pocket card, you don't need the entire card that opens up. Um, it, this is just a quarter of a sheet of the um, basic gray card stock. So it's five and a half by four and a quarter. And we're just going to go ahead and glue this down now. Right there, like that. And now we're going to make our little insert. So I've got a piece of the gray, oh no. Oh no, I just hit something on my computer by accident. There we go, now I'm back with you. Um, okay, so, oh, and Marsha liked that tip about the bow. Good, I'm glad you liked that. that. That one took me quite a while to figure out. Okay, so this piece is four and a half by 
three and an eighth. So three and an eighth, four and a half. This piece here is going to be four and, did I say four and a half? I think it's four and a quarter. Hold on, because I might have been lying. Yeah, okay, four and a half. Okay, okay, bear with me, folks. Apparently, I, okay. Bear with me, you know, I'm just getting back into the groove, right? Okay, four and a half by three and an eighth. Yes, this one is four and a quarter by three and, by two and seven eighths. So two and seven eighths by four and a quarter. So that we just got a nice little quarter inch mat there, okay? So before we glue it on, you always want to do your stamping before you glue, which is not what I did last time, is it? Um, okay, so I've got my Lost Lagoon ink, and I have my Happy Birthday sentiment. We're going to line it up right at the top there. There we go. It's a little bit crooked. You know what's funny is a lot of times we notice those things like, oh, it's a little bit crooked. The person you give, give it to is going to be so appreciative they don't even notice. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue this onto our base. Line it up just like that. Whoops. Now I have a little strip here. This this just happened to be a leftover strip that I had. So that's why I have the height of one and three quarters inches. And then uh, the width, of course, is going to be three and an eighth to match this. So we're going to go ahead and use the um, tear and tape again because it's a nice strong adhesive. And we're going to put it on three sides. Again, trying to stay as close to the edge as possible. You know, in uh, one of our paper pumpkin kits last year, they had a roll of tear and tape, I'll show you, that was, this is a quarter inch and this was an eighth of an inch. Is this an eighth? Yeah, and I love this. I think it would be perfect for projects like this, this really thin one. I was really hoping we'd see it in the annual catalog, but I did not see it. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, please, and you will make my day. Um, because I really like that width. Now I know you can get it elsewhere, but um, I personally prefer it when I can buy it from myself. Okay, so now we're going to take off the release tape. Oops, just throwing stuff around. Okay, now remember when you lay this down, I know this is going to sound pretty remedi remedial. Hey, Susan, welcome. Um, but make sure that when you put this down, the top is the piece that does not have glue. Because if you do it upside down, you're not gonna be able to slide your gift card in there. So now we're gonna line it up. Let's see here. Here I have a business card that I can use. And we just slide it right in there, just like that. See? And then you can write your little message and Stick it right in there and push it down, you know, as far as you can, but you still want to have your message at the top there and you've got your matching envelope and you're good to go. So we got card number two. You guys ready for card number three? This is another really cute set and I forgot to check and see if it's in the new annual catalog. Can anyone tell me if it's in the new annual catalog, if it carried over? Uh, it's called Zany Zoo and it's just got some really, again, the cuteness, that's you know what I gravitate toward. It's got all sorts of nice dyes, extra things um, besides just the images. I love that there's like this little banner, um, this little curvy edge. These are curtains. Um, what's really funny, I have to show you guys this one got this die right here and I don't know how well you can see it on camera let's see for the longest time I thought it was little hot dogs and I couldn't quite figure out how they fit with the rest of it because I mean I could see if there was like a barbecue or something but I couldn't figure out what we would do with these little barbecues um well actually uh <laughs> they're tie backs for the curtain they're not they're not hot dogs um okay so the card we're gonna make this is another really simple one. 
so right here using the little singing turtle something great to celebrate you and that's the inside let's go ahead and get started do our envelope first and the reason I like to do the envelope first I don't know if I told you guys this I don't think I did is um, because the glue is kind of wet and sometimes if it sticks out um, you know if it squishes out the edges then it makes it a little bit wet on here um, and this is how I store my cards you know all like this well if that little glue is on the envelope your cards gonna stick to that and it kind of makes a mess so this just gives the glue a little bit more time to dry while I'm making the card so we put a little bit of glue on the edge A little bit right there. And my strip again, it's two and a half inches by six inches. If you are using a paper that is directional, meaning the images on it matter what direction you put them up, make sure you're putting it on the right way. Okay. So I line it up, press it in, get the inside, press it, and then just trim off that extra. Okay, that, I think I want to just get that little bit extra there. There, oops. There we go. It doesn't look like I got much, oh, there we go. I thought maybe I didn't get enough glue near the edge and I was going to have to add a little more. I didn't, I just needed to push it down again. And that is something you want to check before your glue dries. Not that it's a big deal to add more glue if you need to. Oh, look at those little guys, aren't they cute? Okay, so the next step is we're going to do the inside of the card. This is our Granny Apple Green. It is eight and a half by five and a half, scored in the middle, four and a quarter. So again, just your basic card base. Okay, and then what we're doing for the inside is I have three little strips here. The basic white one is a half an inch wide. It doesn't matter how long, whoops, how long they are as long as they're at least five and a half inches. So um, half an inch, and then this one is five eighths of an inch. And then this one is three quarters of an inch because we're gonna layer them like so, centering them all. So start with the bottom one. I do like to line it up all the way to one edge. Uh, that way I know everything is lined up. Uh, it does help to get it straight because then you can kind of go like, like this and make sure, you know, pressing on the edges to make sure it's straightish. There we go. And now we're going to do the same thing to put on, oh, we're, but we're not gonna put that white on yet. I forgot to stamp it. I forgot to stamp it, you guys. So I'm taking the little musical notes and my black memento ink. And I'm just gonna go all the way down the strip, like this. And I'm kind of moving around where I stamp as far as the height goes, so that the notes are moving all over the place. Because you don't, oops, you don't want it to be too perfect. I mean, for lack of a better way to say it. There we go. Now we're going to glue this on, so let's add a little glue to, this is Coastal Cabana, the color, this kind of teal color. And line it up, try to get it straight-ish. Okay. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I have... 
this piece, it's four and a, or I'm sorry, it's five and a quarter by four. This is going to be the inside of the card. So we're just going to go ahead and line this up along the bottom of the card. So a little bit of glue right there. I probably put a little too much glue. A little goes a very long way with this. And I want to leave just a little bit of a white edge on the bottom there. One nice thing about the liquid glue is it takes a moment for it to get tacky. So if you lay it down and you find out it's not quite straight, you've still got some time to sort of jiggle it around on there. Okay. And I got a little bit of glue on my fingers, which means I got a little bit of glue on my card. Not a big deal. I take my adhesive eraser and I go like this and it just erases it right off. Let's see, got a little bit on here too. If you get the glue on there, let it get a little bit tacky first, and then you can take it off. It, if you try to do it when it's still wet, wet, it just smears it around. So let it go ahead and get tacky and then come back to it. So now I'm going to take my snips. There we go. Trimmed off the edge. Now let's go ahead and put this on the inside of the card. Line it up so it's centered-ish and straight-ish. And this one, oh, I guess it does have the message. There's something great to celebrate you. It could be a birthday card. It could be for someone's achievement. You know, there's a lot you could do with it. So let's start by crumpling up our paper. And I showed you how I did that. Take your spritzer. Point it at the paper. and then start to crumble. Crumple the paper, don't crumble yourself. Okay, Nancy just said, well, she probably didn't just say it, I'm just noticing it, that Zany Zoo is retiring. It did not make it into the new annual catalog. So if you love this set as much as I do, um, you're gonna want to take care of getting that before the end of April when it retires. Thank you, Nancy. Okay, so the other thing when you're crumpling up your paper, sometimes if you Un uncrumple it and then crumple it again. That gives you more lines because now you're, you know, crumpling other areas. So again, I'm going to take my heat tool and we're going to dry it out. Only takes a minute. It's a little bit satisfying because you can see where the water is drying because the paper gets lighter. Or maybe you leave a more, lead a more eventful life than mine and that's not exciting to you. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna set that aside while we do the rest of the card here. So we've got our card base and then I have a little square here. I think it's three by three. Yep, it's three inches by three inches. And I'm gonna go ahead and Gonna just stick it on here. It's it's kind of the center of the card, maybe a little bit higher than center, and it's crooked. Then we're gonna take this piece, and I'm again gonna use the tear and tape because it will work better on this crumpled paper. Take my bone folder to really press the adhesive in there. Okay, and now I'm gonna make it crooked going the opposite direction, so right about here. Really make sure you press down those edges where your adhesive is. I'm gonna take my bone folder and do it. I just wanna make sure to get it on there. And it, you know, it doesn't, it does add quite a bit of texture, I guess. You can't see it quite as well um, on the film, or on the video as you can in real life. Hey, Carol, welcome. Okay, so then our next step, I have this little strip, and this strip is three quarters of an inch, and we're gonna stamp our sentiment. The sentiment is something great to celebrate you. 
and my black memento ink. Three cards tonight, and I only used two colors of ink. Okay, so ink that up, and then I'm just going to stamp it on there. There we go. I'm going to cut this at an angle. And I'm going to cut this at an angle, but I want to leave a little bit of extra room because I'm going to put that bow on there as well. So I did the opposite angle on my original card. I don't think it really matters just so long as both of your both sides have the same angle. Okay, so now we're going to tie a little bow with this little beautiful little ribbon. I love this ribbon. It goes with the um, Zany Zoo Suite. I think it came with a pack of with pink as well, the pink and the green. There we go. Look at that cute little bow. Okay, and then I'm gonna trim it. Oops. There we go. And then I'm going to take a glue dot, mini glue dot, another one of our types of adhesive. These are great for your bows and things like that. You just stick it right on the glue dot, right at the knot of your bow. There we go. And we're just going to stick it on there like so. And then we're going to put this on the card kind of centered. We're going to use... Um, dimensionals for that. If you've never used dimensionals before, what they are is foam adhesive. It allows whatever you're sticking down there to kind of pop up off the card just a little bit. So then you take the backs off and we have a few different kinds of that as well. We have um, strips of it that are really narrow strips, which are great for making shaker cards. We also have sheets of it, which I love for doing like squares and rectangles and bigger spaces. So let's see, we're going to center that right there. Is that straight? Yep, straight. Straight-ish. And then I've got a piece of basic white, and we're going to stamp our little turtle guy on there. There we go. We're going to color him in. He colors pretty quickly because we don't use a whole lot of colors. So for him... We're using the uh, Granny Apple Green Dark and Light. We're also going to be using the um, Color Lifter. I'm going to show you how that works, what that does. You can use that if maybe you've colored it too dense, too dark, and you want to lighten it up a little bit. It You go over it and it kind of it just pulls some of that color up, but it also will help spread color a little bit. And then we're also going to be using the Dark Pool Party. So let's start with the dark, because with this one, I feel like you kind of need to come back and do a second coat of it. So we're going to color it, let it soak in, and then we'll come back to it. Okay. Because I like having the little head of the microphone be a little bit darker. Okay, so for his body, what I did is I took the light granny apple green, and I just kind of went along the edge here. And then take your color lifter. Be careful with your color lifter because if you use it on the black part that you've stamped, it smears. So you want to try to avoid that, um, that black line. But you can kind of see how it's blending it. So it's not quite such a stark line, but it's pulling that color over a little bit to blend it a little bit. I think, is this the dark one? This is the light one. I want to give them a little bit more up here too. Little circles will help blend that. There you go. And if we felt like we needed a little bit more color, and I kind of like think I do, uh, I just want my color to come over a little bit further. Just like that. Then I'm just going to repeat the process and, you know, just kind of 
scribble a little bit, little circles to pull that color over and out a little bit. Being careful to avoid the black line. There. And see how it just gives a, a nice little shaded look. Now we're gonna take the dark granny apple green and we're gonna go around the edge of his head. And we're gonna do a little bit of an angle. We're gonna do the edge of his shell. The little dots, the little squares or whatever you wanna call them on his shell. I'm sure they actually have a technical name. And then I just wanna add a little bit of shading. So I'm gonna make his fingertips dark. I'm gonna make the edge of his leg dark and his toes. Go back to the edge of the shell there. Now we're gonna go back to our light granny apple green here. Being sure to really blend. And do his little arms and legs. Now he's all done. I do want to go back to that microphone and add another layer of color. If you give it time to soak in and then you come back and add layers, it will add um, depth to your color. You can come back as many times as you want. It's not like it'll make it the exact same color. It'll just make it a little bit darker. And like I said, come back as many times as you need to. So now let's go ahead and use the dies to cut him out. He's right there. Should have been better about recycling my tape tonight. Okay, let's see here. Get him all lined up. I think that probably looks good. Hold my die in place. Whoop, oh, I went crazy and I just tried to knock you guys down. Okay. So got my little plates here. Just so you know, when your plates get all chewed up like this, you can see, because that just happens. That's natural. It happens from the dies. It's not a big deal. You can buy replacement um, plates. I don't believe they're going to be in, I don't believe they're in the annual catalog anymore, but you can always find them online. And my website, by the way, is heathersides.stampinup.net. I usually have a nice little thing um, stuck to my desk to remind you of that so you can see it. And I forgot to put that out today. So it's Heather Sides, S-I-D-E-S, -E like the sides of a square. Heathersides.stampinup.net. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and... Uh oh Oh, I was worried I tore my little turtle, but I didn't. I tore the tape. Okay. Oh, I lost my turtle. He fell out. Oh, there he is. I see him. He was trying to escape. Put my dies back. We're going to glue him down. We're going to use the dimensionals again. Actually, I'm going to move that down just a tad. Move that one. I'm going to cut this one in half because his little head isn't quite big enough for a whole one. So I'm gonna put it right there. And I'll put that one right there. Oops, you stay on there. I'll show you who's boss. And then I put him kind of in the bottom corner right here. There we go. And then just to get a little extra bling, I've got these guys. These are the adhesive backed glitter sequins. And these colors are perfect for the card. So let's add a few. And they have small ones and larger ones. I'm gonna use the larger ones and just stick a few of them on here. There. 
And that card is done, so let's put this away and then we can take a look at it with its matching envelope. Clean up as we go. Okay, so here we go. The card with the matching envelope. So we had some fun cards tonight. Let's take a look at all of them and see, you know, decide which ones you like the best. And the fun thing about watching people make cards like this is that you can get some great ideas without having to copy them exactly. So, for example, say you like this layout, but you don't have this stamp set or you don't like this stamp set. You can do this layout with any stamp set. Um, so that is one of the fun things about being able to share ideas with one another is that they don't have to be exact when you make your own, of course. So we have our little singing turtle guy, card number, well, three. We have our pocket card, little pocket gift card. I should have made that just a little bit narrower so it slid in and out a little easier, but that's okay, not, not a huge deal. And then we have our bear with his little honey pot and the bees inside and on the envelope. So there we go, we've got our three cards tonight. I hope you guys had fun, I'm so glad to be back. Thanks, Marsha. If you guys uh, liked what you saw tonight, you enjoyed it, I love it when you give me some thumbs up or some of the little hearts and that kind of thing, um, it strokes my ego. But it also tells um, the YouTubes and the Facebooks, all the algorithms, hey, people are liking this and they, they try to put it out there for more people to see. That's what helps me grow my business. Um, so when you do that, I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, make sure to let me know. You can contact me here on Facebook. Send me a private message if you like, or you can send me an email at stamphappenings at gmail.com, and I'm happy to try to reply to you. Again, my website, I'd love to earn your business if you don't already shop with me. It's, it's Heather Sides dot stampin' up dot net. I had a ton of fun tonight, you guys. I'm so glad to be back. I'm so glad you guys are back. It felt good to see you guys again. And I will see you next week, same time, same place, here at uh, facebook.com slash stamp happenings at 6 p.m. Pacific time. See you guys.